Chapter 6 Now we were on the far side of the snake, and Chief Joseph took command of our people. We climbed out of the dark canyon to an aspen grove, where the herds were allowed to graze. Then we set off toward La Poix, our new home. We went to the Salmon River and crossed it safely, because we had crossed the mighty snake already. At Rocky Canyon we camped beside a pond surrounded by aspen trees. Twenty suns had risen and set since we crossed the big river. La Poix is near, Chief Joseph said. We can reach it with a short march and obey General Howard. But before we go there will be songs and dances, horse races and games, to mark our last days of freedom. Everyone agreed with him, especially the young warriors. The feast days were loud with hoofs of racing horses, the nights with the throb of drums and the soft cries of flageolets. On the last day before we left there was a parade of all of our clans. The horses wore beaded harnesses and their finest saddles. Colored streamers fluttered from their manes and tails. I didn't go to the parade. Bending Willow, my new baby sister, was sick, and I stayed to help springtime take care of her. I had built a fire to make a kettle of kusmush, kusmush. <clears throat> Night shadows lay on the meadow where we were camped when Swan Necklace rode up to the fire. Braids of his long hair hung wild around his face. He opened his mouth, but couldn't speak. What has happened to make your tongue go to sleep in your mouth? I asked him. War, he stammered. War. He wanted a drink of water, and I brought it. War? What war? With the white soldiers. While it had started a war. What do you mean? How can one boy start a war? While Lidditz was riding fast through the camp, having fun with red moccasin tops, Swan Necklace said. By accident, his horse stepped on some coos roots that belonged to Sour Tongue, who never has a good word for anybody. The old man shouted at him, See what you do? Playing like a brave? You ride over my woman's hard-worked food. If you are so brave, why do you not kill the white man who killed your father? Or are you happy just riding your dead father's horse like a child? The old man spoke the truth, I said. That's what Waliditz has done, riding around like a child. He rides no more, Swan Necklace said, not after the insult. Crazy, he jumped down from his horse and was about to kill the old man. Ferocious Bear took his knife away and threw him to the ground. Listen, you saw all this, or someone told you? They made up a story and told you. I was there. I saw it. I saw Waliditz lying on the ground, crying. Suddenly he jumped up and rode off and came back with his rifle. Then I heard him scream, Watch, you'll see I'm not a child playing warrior. You will be sorry for your words. He fired once in the air and then galloped away. Well, Lidditz rode off alone, I said. Not alone. Red Moccasin Tops and I rode after him. We caught up with him at the shack where Larry Ott lived. The door was locked. We broke it down, but Larry Ott was not inside. Then we went to Richard Devine's place. He is the one who set his wild dogs on any of our people who walked by his house. He once murdered a Nemapoo who was crippled and could not walk. He will kill no more of us. We surprised him. Never had one of the people entered his house, while Lidditz shot Devine with his own gun. You helped him do the killing? No, not Devine. I was outside holding the horses. But together we killed another white man, who had whipped some of our people with a whip that had an iron tip, and we would have shot the bootlegger, Sam Benedict, if his bride hadn't begged us to spare him. Swan Necklace was suddenly calm. I need more bullets, he said. I had a pouch full hidden away under the bed in my father's teepee. Give me all you have, Swan Necklace said. There will be much fighting. Don't do any more shooting until Chief Joseph comes back, I said. He's gone off to hunt with his brother. He'll be back today. <laughs> you don't know when he comes back. Things won't wait. Those who need killing will get on their horses and get out of the country, like the white man Ott, who killed Eagle Robe. He drank half of the water I brought him and held out the rest for me. Drink, he said. You look pale as a fish belly. I drank the water. Swan Necklace had changed. He was fierce for war. If I'd had a guardian spirit, I'd have fainted on my knees. Bullets, said Swan Necklace. Beyond the lake, I caught a glimpse of my father and Olicott riding in their black eagle blankets, riding slowly toward our camp. Swan Necklace saw them, too. Hurry, he shouted. My friends are waiting. They are also out of bullets. We have powder, but we need bullets. 
My father and Olicott rode at a gallop. <clears throat> they had heard the news of the killing from someone. Hurry, Swan Nicholas shouted again. I ran fast to the teepee, took the bullets from their hiding place, and hung them on his shoulder. They weighed him down. Chief Joseph and Olicott came out of the trees and up the trail. They galloped to where we stood. They looked grim. We have heard that you have killed white men, Olicott said to Swan Nicholas. We did, he answered. We killed two. Killing, I feared, Chief Joseph said. It's what I have fought against since the beginning. It's war, Olicott said. A war we cannot win, my father said. He pointed a finger at Swan Nicholas. Remember this, young warrior. None of the soldiers will be scalped, not one. Remember this yourself, and tell what I say to your friends. Swan Nicholas tried not to flinch. He was standing beside the two most powerful men in the tribe. His carbine was stuffed under one shoulder. He looked like a soldier, but I think he wanted to run. Warriors had gathered at the lake and built a fire. Two moons rode among them, leading the roan horse that had belonged to one of the white men. He called to his son. He held a red jacket above his head. Swan Necklace rode to his father's side. He took the jacket and put it on. Then he shook his rifle. A cheer went up. It is time to fight, said Two Moons. We will be children no more. We will never go to Lapoy, Ferocious Bear said through closed teeth. Let the soldiers know we will kill them all. Women began to take down the teepees. Our camp was unprotected, and the soldiers would soon be upon us. No, shouted Joseph. Let us stay here until the army comes. We will make some kind of peace with them. But no one listened. 